Now let's make this code more efficient. So what we can do is, uh, since we are using this object f only once, so why we need to create the object? So we can simply copy this code, and instead of writing f, so we can just cut this code, we don't require this part now. So wherever you have f, we can simply paste the code. So this is what we have anonymous class, right? Now same goes for this b. So wherever you find b, we can just write this code. So I hope you are familiar with this uh, inner classes concept. So if you know what is inner classes, you will understand what I'm doing here. So instead of writing b here, we can just, oh, it's not working. Hold on, it's just not copied here. Okay, let me just uh, cut this code. Let's say this is delete. And we'll go down and instead of B, we'll type, we'll paste that code. So now even if I run this code, the output will be same. So let's try, let's try to run this. If I say run as application, see the output is 42, right? So that means, let me close all this extra files here. Close, close, and close. Now you can see, uh, what we have done is, we have created, we are not using anonymous object here, we are creating two streams, one S and second is S1. In S, we are, we are taking all the values, and in S1, we are fetching all the elements by multiplying by two, and then we have found the result with the help of reduce function or reduce method of S1, which take two parameters, initial value and the object of binary, binary operator. Now, as we have seen, this function here is a functional interface. Now, what, is function, what functional interface says is, in Java 8, if you have a functional interface, what you can use is you can use a lambda expression in which you can remove all the boilerplate code. So if you search from here to here, all this code is boilerplate code. The only thing is important here is this i. Okay, and we'll give i in a bracket. So this method, this, this means this is the parameter of your apply method, and this is the body. Okay, so you can reduce the number of lines using this. Now, since we are working with uh, lambda expression, you don't have to specify the written type also. You can simply say i into two. Now since i is only one statement, you have to remove the semicolon. And since you are removing semicolon, you can remove this curly basis. And you can see this is lambda expression. Simple. Okay, now I just specify the type of stream values here. So we have to say it is, uh, the type of values should be integers. I forgot to mention this. Since you are following generics, you have to follow generics from start to end. And then we can simply say it is, we can write this thing in one line. So we can take out this i into two, and then we can remove this, uh, I, uh, we can remove this bracket just because we have only one parameter. So if you're using only one parameter, you don't require those uh, round brackets after, uh, with your variable. So you can write this in one line. So instead of defining an object, we can, in fact, in, instead of defining an anonymous class, we can directly use a lambda expression. Can we use lambda expression here? Yes, we can. So what we can simply do is this binary operator takes two values, not one value. So instead of defining all this thing, let me write in this way. It, it takes two values, we can simply say i and j, and what it applies is, it will simply say i plus j. So it takes two values i, j, it returns i plus j. So it works, initially the value will be zero and the first value, it will get added. That value will become i, and then it will be added with j. Now since uh, we are using a concept of carry here, we can use something or element name called a c and e, which is more logical. c is the carry and e is the value. Clear? So we can write this thing in one line. Now can we make this code more efficient? Uh, and the answer is yes, we can. What if instead of writing s1 here and integer here, what if I simply write s dot map function with i, uh, I'm just defining the, uh, the, previous, uh, the previous statement here. So instead of defining s1, we can simply write this thing, right? So I've removed that. Let me remove the comment also. 
So you can see what we have written is we have simply written s dot map dot reduce and this function. If I run this, the output is same. Now if you say we can make this code more efficient, why to define s here when we can write instead of s we can simply write values dot stream and bracket. So we don't require this thing also. Simple. And if I run this now, and the output is still same. Then question arises: Why to write result when you can directly write this thing in the in print ln? So we can simply write it here. So we say it's paste. So we don't require this statement. And this is what we have done in the first tutorial of your map and this methods, right? So it's that simple. Uh, initially, you will find it difficult, but trust me, it's not difficult. It's just unfamiliar for you. So once you start coding with Stream API, you will find it very easy to work with. In fact, uh, when I started with Stream API for the first time, it was I guess in May, uh, May 2014, uh, I, I found it very difficult to adjust or very difficult to absorb. But after, after some time, I started working with this, all this different uh, Lambda expression. Now, whenever I, def I want to define an anonymous object, I prefer to go with uh, Lambda expression if that interface is functional interface. It is that easy. So this is how we can use different methods which is map, reduce, uh, in the stream API. So let's run this code once again just to get the final output which is 42.